Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Nice to see you back and somebody had asked me a question some time back. It is a very, 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 very crucial, very important, very, it's the most crucial question actually. The question is, uh, this lady had asked me that I came to, to study astrology with certain expectations and those expectations were not fulfilled. Why were they not fulfilled? So, there's the video. Five wrong expectations from astrology. This is for you, your own personal life. Right? And anybody who comes to astrology with these expectations will be frustrated, will be angry, will be baffled. And they will go away from astrology and they will become anti to astrology, which means they will go and insult astrology. They will say astrology doesn't work, it's useless, blah, 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 all the fancy stuff. And then they will go and say that it's a fake science basically, all right? So therefore, it's crucial that we uh, get the right understanding of why, uh, why, what, what astrology cannot give us actually, okay? Because although it's a Vedanga, but uh, there are certain limitations with astrology. These are not limitations actually. This is common sense basically. But uh, as my guru used to say, the biggest problem in Kali Yuga is uh, common sense is least common in people. Okay, so therefore, if you have come to astrology with these five expectations, then you are destined to be frustrated. All right, so give up these expectations if you are here with these expectations either there, there are million expectations wrong expectations but i have noted down five all right so therefore if you are new to the channel then uh, please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me then you can go to my website down in the description section and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him so what is the first wrong expectation from astrology I can change my karma or I will change my karma once I learn astrology. No, 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 that cannot happen. It is not possible. That is why it is called destiny. Destiny means that which is destined. Destined means it has to happen for, is the meaning of the word. If, if you can change destiny, then it's not destiny, it's something else, all right? So uh, now then people have uh, this confusion uh, with regards to free will. Then do you say that free will doesn't exist? Or, so we'll talk about free will later. Let's talk about destiny. So whatever your horoscope is indicating. Now people say that sthira, uh, the sthira rashi is the fixed signs indicate fixed karma and movable signs indicate movable karma, which means you can change it. No, that's nonsense. That's sheer crap. You cannot do that. Karma is karma. Either it's a fixed sign or movable sign or dual sign. You just simply cannot change it. Well, if that would be the case, then anybody who had Venus in Aries or, you know, or Cancer or uh, this uh, Libra or Capricorn, uh, then, I mean, uh, maybe they would have had fantastic married lives, all all the people, right? But because they, they if, if they had some negative... Karma related to Venus or seventh lord being in these signs, then they would have changed their karma, right? So, please understand that astrology is not a tool to change your karma. Astrology is a tool to understand your karma. So, I repeat, you can understand your karma, all right? You cannot change it. So, you better make peace with the fact, okay? So, now, then many people will say, oh, you are creating fear. You are saying it's fatalistic. We cannot do anything. No, I didn't say that. What I said was, the external things cannot be changed. So, for example, if you have a problem in certain area of your life, you cannot change it with any remedies or mantras. It cannot be changed. But what can you do? One thing you can do, which changes everything. You can limit the extent to which that affects you internally. That is under your control. Which means, suppose uh, you have a big company, you are a millionaire, for example, let's say, 
And then in your destiny is that, that when this dasha comes, you go bankrupt or you lose your job, something like this. So then now can you change that by doing some mantras or pujas? Yekas? No, you cannot change it. Direct blanket statement, you cannot change it. When that has to happen, it will happen. But if you are totally materialistic, you will go and commit suicide or you will get into depression and you will start drinking. Why? Because you are totally obsessed with that thing, right? Your uh, million dollars. But suppose you are spiritually elevated, you have cultivated yourself spiritually. Then that thing will not affect you internally. And that is under your control 100%. And that is where free will comes in. Okay. So we'll discuss about free will in point number three. It's also there on the list. So therefore, uh, understand that you cannot change your karma externally, but you can limit the extent to which it affects you only by doing spiritual practices, not by doing graha remedies. It doesn't work. It's all useless. Okay. You cannot just chant some Shani mantra or some Shukra mantra or some Guru, this Vyaspati mantra. And then you can limit no, 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 you can't. All right. Direct blanket statement. It doesn't work. You don't believe me? Try it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> you will waste 10 years of your life doing all these things. If you expect that it will change the externals, in that case, it doesn't work. Okay. Number two. This is another wrong expectation which people have. And this actually should be number one, to be honest. My life will magically change from tomorrow morning once I learn astrology. No, 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 it doesn't. So your life will change when you change your habits. So people say we create our future, we create our destiny. No, you don't create destiny. You don't create your future. You only create your habits. And habits create your destiny. Habits create your future. So if you want to change your future or if you want to create your destiny, whatever you call it, it's up to you. Choice is yours. <laughs> the, only, uh, the only thing which you can do is have good habits in your life. Because if you have terrible habits, you will have a terrible future. It's common sense basically. There's nothing to create fear. If you're if you're ruining your health by eating meat or wine or smoking or doing other crazy stuff, then you're going to die, right? Yes, anybody understands that. And therefore, uh, you have to understand that your life can change magically from tomorrow morning. It can. If you wish, if you make the right decisions, if you take the right steps under the guidance of your gurus and the scriptural authority, especially like Bhagavad Gita, all right? Any action which is done whimsically cannot yield you any happiness. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Nasasiddhim avapanoti nasukham naparam gatim One who acts whimsically as per his own mind. Mano rathe nasati dhavato bahi does not attain happiness in this life or in the next. Krishna says that very clearly. So therefore, we must read scriptures like the Bhagavad Gita to understand how we should lead a good, decent human life. What kind of habits we should cultivate. We should read scriptures like the Ramayana where we see personalities like Lord Ram, Devi Sita, Bharat Maharaj, Lakshman, Hanuman, only then we can know how, how we should behave. <laughs> we will not understand uh, how to behave by seeing uh, cricketers, film stars, footballers, football players or politicians. Anybody of this material world in Kali Yuga cannot give you any inspiration. They can give for some amount of time and people don't like this when I say they'll, they'll start hating me. Uh, they will abuse me in the comments, but that's the fact. They may have a million followers in YouTube or in Instagram, not in YouTube, of course, in Instagram, you know, followers, million followers. But it doesn't work. They, they cannot save anybody because this is this proverb, uh, drowning man cannot save another drowning man because that person himself, he is drowning. So all these materialistic icons of the society, they are like drowning 
uh, stones. So those who are drowning themselves in this material ocean, one day they are going to perish. They cannot save us. So when we do the necessary spiritual practices every day, morning, day in and day out, and we read scriptures like the Bhagavad Gita, do our mantras and lead a good lifestyle, only then we can create good habits. Because to create good habits, there is one prerequisite. What is that? Your mind has to be peaceful. Only then you can dictate the mind. Otherwise, the mind dictates you. <laughs> yes, if you are in rajas and tamas, the mind will dictate you. Hey, you bloody dog, go and do this, go and do that. Today, do, today this person, tomorrow that person, today I like her, tomorrow I like him. Yes, anything can go on in this particular world. Today you might like somebody, after two days, one month you say, no, I don't like this person, I like that person. All right, this is going on in this material world. People are just behaving like animals. So, why? Because they are following the dictates of their mind. The mind is like the boss, who is like a, like a dog, like you are like a dog running behind the mind. And you are obeying like a helpless uh, servant, like a slave, like a, like a dog. You are just jumping and licking your tongue outside and you are just following the dictates of the mind. This is what happens when you are in rajas and tamas. All right. So uh, if, you, if you do not have satogun in your life, you will you'll be a dog of your mind. It's very simple. So don't be a dog of your mind. Make your mind your dog. Make your mind listen to you. All right. So therefore, have good habits. And only then your life will change magically the next day morning. Okay, Even though not the next day, it will take some time still. Okay, number three. This is big. Astrology will be a replacement for my laziness, headlessness and indecision. No, 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 no. It, it will not. So let's take an example. A person is headless. He doesn't know what he should do in life. And when I say do, I don't mean career or money. Or marriage. In, in general, the person has no reason why he gets up in the morning. He, he, he doesn't know anything what's going on. He's just like, ah, others are going to office, so I'm going, you know. Life's so terrible, life's miserable. My boss is miserable. My husband is crooked. My wife is shouting at me always. My children don't listen to me. Life's terrible after all, you know. So, so these people who are totally headless, they think that by... Knowing things like, for example, uh, let's take an example. Suppose somebody has uh, Jupiter in the 10th house. Okay. Yes. <laughs> How many of you have Jupiter in the 10th house? Write down in the comments. All right. So, now Jupiter in the 10th house. Maybe you are certain ascendant. Maybe you are, you know, Taurus. Or maybe you are any any ascendant. There are billion trillion possibilities of what Jupiter can do in tenth house for a Leo ascendant or for a Taurus ascendant. Now you will say, okay, we will go to divisional charts and figure out. But I challenge you, you take one unknown horoscope. I am giving you open challenge. I don't know how much astrology you know. You may be the best astrologer in this world, or you may be a beginner. Just try it. Hmm. Remember this challenge after 30, 40 years of learning astrology, maybe after 50 years. You take a random unknown blank horoscope, a person who you don't know at all. You have never seen, never met, never heard of, of, of that person or, or a stranger. And you see, you know, that person has Venus in 10th house, Jupiter in 10th house. And then you go to divisional charts. Okay, You go to Navamsa, then you see, oh, there is Venus in 10th. All right. Then you go to the Samsa, then you see, oh, actually his 10th Lord is in the 8th. Mm, interesting. Huh? So, you take an unknown horoscope. You have no idea of the person. And then you try to predict what will the person do in his career. It is impossible. You simply cannot predict. Yeah, you can say that the person has Jupiter in a 10th. Maybe he's into guide, guiding others, counseling others. But you cannot predict pinpoint exactly. Oh, he will be guiding sportsmen. He's a sports coach. Or he he's a teacher in uh, Udemy. He teaches uh, programming online. Or he teaches astrology online. You could still do. But then it's not 100%. Okay. So 
you have to stabilize your mind you have to figure out yourself what you should do in life who you want to marry do you want to marry this person or that person going to an astrologer and now of course when 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 you are having uh, two three options like in case of any marriages in india then you can go to an astrologer and uh, ask that okay which which of the two horoscopes will be good for marriage in my case and then maybe the astrologer can guide you but then at the end it is your decision who to marry the astrologer cannot instruct you or he should not instruct you that yes he says i am telling you should marry this person go and marry that person no the astrologer should not do that because that is your decision and even if he does that it is still your decision okay so if you are confused in life if you are headless if you don't know anything what you should be doing then what will happen after you know astrology you will become more confused <laughs> yeah you will become millions of times more confused because you see uh, videos in youtube and you will be commenting below those videos yes there are many people who will be outraged when i see this, say this there are a huge number of people in youtube or even maybe you are one of them watching this video there are many people who uh, still keep commenting below astrology videos i have jupiter in 10th house what career should i take so the, the these uh, people uh, and it's very surprising i have seen people who are commenting uh, in my videos especially from last two years i mean not bad or nasty comments but in general they have been studying astrology from last two years i have seen but even now i see them commenting things like oh i have jupiter in the 10th what's going to happen what's that magical thing which will happen in my life so by one placement you cannot decide what is going to happen your career for god's sake you are giving 8 to 10 hours of your life one third or 40% of your life cannot be decided by one placement you got to see so many things but even then you can't find out 100% so it is you who have to find it you have to ask yourself you have to meditate you have to internalize yourself you have to see what skills you have what what are your goals how can you match your skills with your goals and then you can use astrology to move ahead but if you think you are totally headless and blank and then you go and see jupiter in 10th you will become a coach uh doesn't work like that okay so that's a wrong expectation from astrology and you will then what you will do i know you will search in youtube jupiter in 10th house some astrology channels have videos on on this jupiter in 10th there are maybe 10000 videos in youtube hmm? jupiter in 10th you will watch hindi videos you will watch english videos you will watch marathi videos you will watch telugu videos you will watch german videos you will watch french videos you will watch spanish videos <laughs> yes you will translate jupiter in 10th and all freaking 10 astrologers will say 10 freaking different things so what do you do you are confused you are more confused you are more angry at astrology you are more disheartened okay so it's a very wrong reason to learn astrology or wrong expectation from astrology okay now what's the next ah astrology interferes in my free will so this is like saying many people say oh my shani dasha has started from now and the next 19 years of my life is ruined i am totally finished i am dead i am done <laughs> rahu mahadasha has started 18 years oh my god rahu <laughs> rahu chhodega nahi mere ko these are things which people tell me sometimes so again going back to point 1 whatever is in your destiny you cannot change but that doesn't mean the planet will take away your free will the free will is always there what is free will free will means how you react to your destiny that is free will free will is free will doesn't mean you change destiny no that's a very idiotic stupid notion of free will which people have these days and this has come from somewhere i don't know from where but the vedic scriptures don't entertain this idea in fact they are they contradict this idea that free will is uh, opposing destiny you no know, free will never opposes destiny 
destiny is something which has to happen which will happen but free will is how do you react to it so again going back to square one you had a million dollars you lost 1 million dollars so that's your destiny but now your free will is okay so what do i do after losing do i get into depression and i start drinking wine or i start visiting prostitutes or what do i do or do i sit and meditate and try to improve my consciousness and become more spiritual so that next time if i lose 1 million dollars it does not affect me to that extent which it, to which it has affected me now not that you don't earn money and you go to the forest that's not the point here so that is what is free will so astrology so this fatalistic idea anyways my saturn mahadasha is there 19 years what can i do after all hmm? shani has ruined me shani ne barbaad kar diya mujhe shani choda nahi mere ko and in fact i have seen people they abuse the malefics also shani is a bloody <laughs> yeah there are people who do like this and they think by doing this their life will improve all right so you have to understand the traits of malefics yes they are cruel planets they are difficult they are challenging but that doesn't mean you should abuse them with uh, uh slang words i mean it won't help you all right so blaming astrology for not using your free will properly it is your mistake that you have not used your free will properly so do not blame astrology or your dashas for that okay even if you want to blame them at all superficially you can say oh yeah this is my destiny because they don't punish you it is you your destiny they are reflecting all right so even if you blame them it's your fault okay ah the last thing this is very crucial spiritual progress using astrology see you, you there are ways by which you can to some extent find out if a person meets a guru or when he will do some spiritual practices there are ways by which you can figure out i am not saying there are no ways but the inner transformation which he will have that is almost impossible to find using astrology so there are many people when i do consultations uh i tell them that okay so sir you should do this spiritual practice you should do this mantra or you should do these 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 activities and then they tell me that oh sir uh, if i do the mantras will i advance will i advance spiritually is it there in my destiny is it there in my horoscope is it there in my charts so for god sake please don't ask such questions to anybody don't even ask to yourself because our spirituality deals with the soul which is beyond karma okay so therefore you you should not use astrology beyond a certain extent to see your spiritual life this is my clear cut opinion now i'm not saying that you don't use it at all you can use it but you you should not use it like a shield and a hide behind so that you don't want to do spiritual practices and then you blame that oh my rahu dasha has started uh so i will become more materialistic right no it's not like that. what if your rahu is in the ninth house it's with the ninth lord you may meet a foreign guru or a guru in the spiritual in a foreign lands so then your spiritual life starts yes there are so many people who have become more spiritual in rahu mahadasha so just because it is rahu it doesn't mean it will uh, drag you into drugs or uh, prostitution no it's not like that ha if rahu is indicating that by house placement then it can happen but that same thing can happen with venus also all right so just because it is a malefic or it's a planet in eighth house no it doesn't mean that you cannot become spiritual it doesn't mean that eighth house means you can become spiritual but after some lessons which you have to learn <laughs> all right so therefore don't uh, it's it's a very it's not very good to base your spiritual life all together on astrology for material life you could still do that sixth house dasha is running marriage is difficult but for spiritual life it doesn't work externally it can work okay you meet some guru spiritual community and all that that can find that we can figure out using astrology but who were you one year back and who are you now 
after doing spiritual practices that is very 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 difficult or almost impossible to figure out using astrology so <clears throat> if you want to do some spiritual practices stop waiting for dashas and transits to start or anything to fall in place no now is the time you want to do it don't wait till your ninth lord's dasha comes don't wait till sun mahadasha don't wait till guru Maha, jupiter mahadasha don't wait till moon mahadasha moon is the sign cancer where jupiter gets exalted no it doesn't work like that just because you will not have moon mahadasha in life so you will not do spiritual practices no it's not good <laughs> all right you will do spiritual practice when guru mahadasha comes at the age of 75 all right but then you won't even remember your name what will you remember god's name you you might have alzheimer's you may forget your name you will not remember your husband or your wife's name you will remember you you think you will remember krishna's name that time no it's not possible all right so don't cheat yourself don't cheat your don't kick away your spiritual uh, practices in the name of astrology please don't do that there are many people who, who are doing this I get people who tell, oh, next year my Antar Dasha is going to start. You know, Guru Antar Dasha will start. That time I will go to Vindavan. No, it doesn't work like that. All right. I mean, if you have certain plans and it is matching, then it's different. But if you are sitting and looking at your horoscope and waiting, oh, when is the Dasha coming? Oh, after 12 years. Ah, after 12 years, I will be. All right, so that's very naive actually. <laughs> that means you have not understood anything. All right, thank you very much. So these are the points, and there are many other points also which uh, you can write it down in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Okay, and as usual, if you're new to the channel, then please subscribe to it. And if you want a consultation from me, you can always go down to the description section. What is there with you? All the time, just look to him, and you will find him.